Chester, well, first of all, let me welcome uh, <laughs> Senator, <laughs> Senator Chester Humphrey, uh, Labour representative. <coughs> Senator Chester, you said this to me two years ago. Well, first of that, all, that the NDC would lose this election in a dramatic way. I mean, what foresight do you have, Chester? But first, how do you feel tonight, Chester? A any surprise um, here? Not surprise. And um, Mr. Yeah. Archibald. Results. 12, 8, 8, 11, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, Chester, yes, uh, we, we were saying here, here officially the Prime Minister uh, um, has lost the seat to uh, the incumbent, to Clifton Paul, the newcomer. 15-0, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a replay of what, uh, 2000? Uh, 1999. Well, first of all, Mr. Archibald did say he expected somebody from the leadership. But I would, I would revert to the Christian Bible. What did Alan, Adam do when he had the apple? He went hiding, didn't he? <laughs> um, uh, I predicted this, as you know, in 2010, in January, in a program I did beyond the headline. I predicted when I got the first <coughs> whiff that there were internal moves by the, what I describe as the parasitic technocracy that had seized influence and power inside of the party and had surrounded the prime minister, and they were juxtaposing for power, I predicted that if the prime minister moved along the lines of non-inclusive government, and he went into exclusive government, where he resorted to a more backward ideological stance and political form, that precisely what we see in here today would play out. And so I'm not really surprised by the results. I expected the results. I know many people are angered when I speak, but I, I attempt to speak the truth. I don't always accurately do, but I can tell you when I don't speak the truth, <laughs> it is more a factor of accident than a factor of intention. But what does 15 nil do for governance? Uh, well, we've been there before. We we've been there before. In 1999, and by 2003, the persons who had won the 15 seats had lost the popular vote. Dr. Mitchell has a great opportunity, an opportunity greater than Tillman Thomas has ever had, and ever had in 2008, to build a construct that reconstitutes the politics of Grenada. Mm -hmm. And I would advise any politician, don't take the people for Granted. Yes, yes. And that is precisely what has happened. Where we are now is the baby that belongs to George Worm, George Grant, um, William Joseph, Nazim Burke, first and foremost. These are the principal architects of the governance of exclusiveness and the governance of excluding people. And unless Nas come to terms with his obsession of becoming prime minister, I think he's politically finished. Where does this leave the NDC at, at this point? What, what, what do you see going on? Um, Is there any role for Peter David in this, oh, in yeah. this, in this new uh, country? I can't speak okay. for Peter David. He will have to define his future. Um, <coughs> in every difficulty, there are opportunities. And a lot depends on how um, prime minister to be Mitchell manages this. If he approaches government, governance with the maturity that I think you should have after so many years in government. Yeah. And being in that position before. And being in that position before. And experiencing being out of office. And if he understands that society is constructed with fears, spheres of influence and that necessarily quite often to hold power you have to devolve it and that you have to have an inclusive approach to governance. Because first and foremost, the economic crisis faced by this country cannot be solved by any one group. Nope. Let's be absolutely clear you on this. You think Dr. Mitchell understands this? Well, it's not what I think. It is what will be. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of time to see what unfolds. Mm -hmm. Right? What unfolds. Um, I think Mr. Archibald has constantly said this on his programs in terms of speaking about the economy. Well, of course, he's a banker with a 
huge amount of experience. But we cannot pull through this economic crisis as a small peripheral state with an undeveloped, almost literal model economy. We can't pull through this crisis unless we build an alliances of people and unless the business classes understand that while profit is the, the heart of business, but in this period we have to make equal sacrifices and that you have to understand the pain of the workers and the working people and that uh, when you come to business, it has to be a different contextual approach in which we try to build a community. And if you understand what the building of a community is, it can't be one man take over. What was the priority in labor going forward in this administration? Saving before? jobs and making sure the economy gets back on track. That's you think, the think the opportunities for, for the jobs are there? Well, it will have to be created mm -hmm. by a confluence of collective forces. It cannot be done exclusively. Labor can't play the old-time game. We have to have a more enlightened approach. So you headed the old-time game, so that's a self-criticism here? Well, partially so, but then when you meet obstinate, unreasoned employers, <laughs> then you have to resort to the old stick, which is what they understand Chris, I won't let you respond. Do you want to return to the Senate? <laughs> if I want to return to the Senate, yeah. that's a matter for the TUC. Well, what's, like your what's your ambition? No, what's your? I, I, I am a tool in the hands of others. Whatever they assign me to do, I do it to the best of my ability. Whether that means fighting Chris or cooperating with him, it's 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 it's, 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 it's not completely in my hands. Not Chris, I would allow you to respond. You know, no, it's interesting. We have uh, the labor representative in the Senate and the and the business sector representative in the Senate. You know, Chris naturally respond. You know, no, I, I, I support Senator Humphrey in the fact that the construct going forward has to be different. That is clear. Yeah. The maturity by the leadership yeah. by the fifteen zero mandate no, has to yeah. be different. Yeah. It cannot be business as usual, yeah. and the problems to be solved cannot be one party to do it. Yeah. As I said before on different yeah. shows, the passion of the elections are over. Uh -huh. We have supported our various parties with the passion that is expected. No, that's yeah. complete. Yeah. We know who is in, in, in charge and who yeah. is going to be in government. Yeah. Yeah. We know we all have to come together, put the, the colors aside. Mm -hmm put our differences aside and say, listen, we are not working for Grenada, so I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Grenada requires all of us to put our efforts in one boat and move it forward. Or else we would not move forward and we would get back to the same situation. As my friend in the end has said, we are no longer patient populists. Yeah. Our population is no longer patient. If, if you don't seem to be doing what you want to do and getting things to happen, we will change you. Yes. And we Jerry, will change and, and, you in a and, and it's interesting, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry George here is, is a freelance journalist from St. Vincent. I mean, how is the region going to look at us now, uh, uh, given, given what we've seen here? What, what's going to be their pers perception on, on, on I think Grenada? I think the region's perspective on Grenada is going to be, you might have just redeemed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a bold step to say, right? Bold thing to say. But no, that that be in a certain yeah. degree yeah. is facetious. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but seriously, I think what has proven here is that the system works. The democratic system has worked. It has delivered a result that clearly seems to be the will of the people. Because there is no way you could say there was a hanky panky in this. Okay, it is very clear. But so more, it has worked. More importantly, it teaches the lesson that. Um, because essentially the campaign, the campaign of the NDC was a backward campaign. It was premise unfair. And in a context where the people are hurting in their belly, and yeah, where cool. unemployment is over the 40 percent, and household incomes have been cut in half, fair doesn't work. Doesn't work. The other day, I looked at the television in Syria, and I saw a group of kids playing football in the middle of the war. <laughs> in other words, there's a place for fair. Fair couldn't work on this occasion because it didn't reconcile with the message that the people wanted to hear. What the people wanted to hear was delivery from the economic circumstances. Food. And Byron, I tried. I tried with this group. I warned them about the CCC and the jobs. I told them there was a coming well, Why storm. didn't they not? Because you, pro, you, you, you recommended uh, arbitration. Um, on, on the matter. No, Mr. Um, Burke threw it. Mr. Burke threw it to the wind. Yeah. You see, you've got to understand the parasitic technocracy. This, <laughs> repeat that. Repeat that word again. I just call them the parasitic technocracy. <laughs> they are a group it's of guys. Me, who, sorry. They are yeah, a group yeah. of guys who are yeah. universally yeah. learned. Yeah. 
Most of them really are the children of working people. Yeah. But their university learned, so they are adorned with scholarship. And they believe that that scholarship gives them the absolute right to determine everything. Right? But by and large, they are non-producers. Mm -hmm. They're non-producers. They don't run any business. They have no business experience. They're essentially employees. And what they do is they mesmerize people. And when you have a weak leadership that is weak, has no vision, has no intellectual depth, has no historic context. What do you, you think of when you hear church, when you hear church say this? <laughs> well, 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 let I, me have a response from your point of view. Well, no, yeah. number one, I enjoy listening to church. <laughs> As he knows, we argue. I don't always agree with him. But one cannot help but like to listen to what Chester yeah. has to say. Yeah. But I wanted to go back to something he said earlier yeah. on. Yeah. I think Dr. Mitchell re really has a fantastic opportunity here. Mm -hmm. And a lot will depend on how he embraces that opportunity and how he moves forward. One will have to hope that he also thinks about his legacy. I mean, he, he was, the, the, the people threw him out of, out of, out of governance. He's back. Mm -hmm. He has the opportunity. Mm -hmm. What does he want to leave behind? A better Grenada? Does he want to leave behind that, or does he want to leave behind the image that was painted of him by the NDC party? So a lot depends on what Dr. Mitchell himself wants. But I hope he wants to take the step of inclusiveness, reaching out to the people who can contribute and who can help, and trying to bring the country together. We are too divided. And I keep um, complaining about the way in which the politicians have created this tribalism. We would like to hope that moving forward, he makes deliberate steps at bringing us together and moving, the, trying to move the country. Jerry, I've heard you talk about the victimization, this, this spite, you know, how, how, <clears throat> how, how we've seen it in the past, we see it in the region. Uh, how, how, how big is that a challenge? Uh, let, let, me how, first, yeah. let me first speak to the eloquence of, yeah. of the Just, Humphrey, yeah. because I think he has so eloquently described much of the leadership of the region and the politics of the region that has to change. Mm -hmm. And he's put it in a context to me that I wish I had said some of those words myself, yeah. quite frankly. Yeah. Because what we do have is a lot of academics, right, who are trying to, to grapple with running the governance of these, of these countries. And they're doing it almost from a, a bookish perspective. And he's right. Most of them are employees. It's all about themselves. Mm. Yes. Mm. They, they look they, for all of these civil service jobs that yeah. come down from CEDA and so on and high-paying international salaries. It's <coughs> all about themselves. It's not really about the people. Yeah. Although they come from the bowels of the people, uh, but, they, but, but they use the instrument of this certification as an access to accumulate, knocking on the doors of high salaries and so on. And this is what had befallen the NDC. So well, it's not just I'm going further than the NDC, because no if, if, you look at, if you look around, there are, there are huge pockets of that, I feel, in the region. And that is why the people who come forward for leadership of our, of our countries and of our economies going forward. We had a period when there were a lot of lawyers, okay? And today's world is calling for somebody to be a CEO to run the countries. And that is what is lacking, okay? Mm -hmm. And until we get back for people to understand, it's not a university degree that, that delivers um, anything, that you have to now take that knowledge and actualize it in a real sense and make it work for people. Until we get there, Trust me, we are going to be struggling. Byron, before I leave, I want to say something about Dr. Mitchell. And that he has created double history. Mm -hmm. He has defeated the NDC twice. Mm -hmm. Never happened before. Not even in the worst days of Mr. Blaze. And Mr. Blaze suffered a humiliating defeat as 15-0, which he did against George Rezan. Mm -hmm. And now he has done it against Tillman Thomas. Mm -hmm. Tillman Thomas represents the last... Um, what I would describe as the last of the George Brisson type. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. And hopefully, if there's going to be a role for the future of NDC, I heard his general secretary talking about going back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. um, basically, they're, they're finished. One question for you. In, in, in 2008, quote unquote, the left, progressives in Grenada worked with the NDC. And That's clearly, why they took power. Uh, <laughs> exactly the question. This has happened this time. No, the lesson is simple. Yeah. The lesson yeah. is simple. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I said yeah. the, 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 the victory mm -hmm. in 2008 of Tillman Thomas mm -hmm. saw him not 
maturing, mm -hmm. but saw him reversing. Mm -hmm. And he reversed into a period of backwardness mm -hmm. rather than mature and come forward. Mm -hmm. Because the crises which came, mm -hmm. it is primarily because of his making. Mm -hmm. And it was sad to hear him talk about the dictatorship of the prime, of, of prime ministerial government in a cabinet. Yes, where, yes, where, yes, where, yes. where the cabinet is a creature, the prime minister, and yes. there's no democracy in cabinet. Yes. I've never heard so, yes. such warped yes. thinking yes. 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 when yes. one yes. comes to the whole. And yeah. it tells me really yeah. that Tillman Thomas is really a rote individual. Um, he understands things by rote. He don't understand his fundamental essence. Because he must know that while the prime minister advises the governor general on the constituting of the cabinet, but the power of the prime minister is checked by the no confidence that can be wielded in the parliament among the mm -hmm. elected parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as Francis Alexis correctly wrote, there's a piece that I read on the internet while I was in Japan, because that crisis broke out then. And Francis Alexis wrote a very succinct piece, but profoundly intellectual and in-depth, in which he was trying to say to the prime minister, you must be conscious that your power in the cabinet is balanced by the power of the elected members in the House. Mm -hmm. And you can't be unconscious mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for some reason, the technocratic, the parasitic technocratic group which surrounded Tillman and, and, and caused him to utilize his power because it wasn't the prime minister was using his power. His power was being used each time they required it. And he used it, not because he designed it, but because they wanted him to use it. So it was like a kind of puppet on a string, okay. right? <laughs> kind of puppet on a string led to what we see here. So you expel all of these people, more than half your cabinet, that is after the vote of no confidence when you barely survive. Exactly. Just I have to take a, a short break now.